Hey guys, my name is Ryan Central and welcome to Hitscan. And it might be the last time that I ever start a video with that introduction. I'll talk about that a little bit later on in the video. I want to talk about the Run It Back Bundle free that's coming out in this next patch. Speaking of which, there's no actual patch notes or any changes. The devs are going to update their engine. So a little bit of a break and it should be back on August the 8th, I think, in two weeks time. But the new skin line is the Run It Back Bundle. Uh, the tweet that came out, all of the information, doesn't actually give us a whole lot to work with usually uh, this is paired up with a charity where people buy this bundle a percentage of the revenue goes to a charity that's not been announced the riot have also not told us how much the bundle is going to be but we can of course see the skins that are going to be in there We'll start off with the gun pistol. Uh, this is the pistol I typically run with as well. Possibly one of the best in the game, to be honest. And I'm just going to let it play out so you can have a look, see if it's interested to you. We'll move over to some of the other skins. We then have the Ego Stinger. Really pretty, not really too much to highlight when it comes to kill animations and all that. So I'll just play it out just so you have a good idea. And again, what it sounds like, what you're expecting. We then have the Radiant Crisis Bucky, which on any other gun, I think it would be preferred to be honest. But if you haven't seen this one before, it's pretty spectacular. Have a look. Got two bigger guns. The first one is the Ion Phantom. This has been in the game, what, since like 2020, I think. And like the previous guns, you can see the kill animations and other bits and pieces that you can get with a skin if you're interested. And finally, we have the Mage Punk Sniper Rifle. Still waiting for either a Phantom or a Vandal of the Mage Punk set. Probably one of my favorites. It's just a shame we don't have a big rifle. But if you're not playing, this interests you. You can get it with this and also a couple of these variants too. For those that were hoping for a melee, there isn't one, unfortunately. Uh, there could have been plenty to put in here, but yeah, I, I wonder why they selected these skins. Not that they selected bad ones as such, but there's so many good skin lines in here. I was expecting, you know, something from Ruination or Sentinels of Light does set because I think they're my favorite two, personally. Um, we've had some over the year as well that could have gone in, but like, I, I'm like content with this. I'd certainly like pick up the Mage Punk Operator and if it goes to charity, even better, right? But no details yet. I'll put that in the description when there's more to talk about. But before we talk about the changes to Hitscan and the general update there, Quick shout out to the sponsor of this video. Yeah, this video is sponsored by Alienware and NVIDIA. If it sounds like I'm trying to be quiet, it's because I am. I just got here to Copenhagen and I've already been yelled at by a Danish woman because I was a little bit too loud recording this. So I'm trying to you know, bring it down a little bit. Obviously, I'm here because Masters 2 it actually has a live audience, the first real big event that's happening in Valorant. And of course, I had to be there, but I need to work as I go along, whether that's prepping for events, which I'm doing at the moment, or making a video like this. I have to do this a lot. So relying on Alienware laptops like this M15 R5 has been tremendous. Not only can I do all of the work I need to, but I can also play Valorant, log in, check my night market, get really frustrated at my night market, off a powerful laptop with a QHD 240Hz monitor that's 15 inches big, not too much. But like I mentioned, this video is also sponsored by Nvidia who want to get this message out. If you have an Nvidia GeForce RTX 9 series, 10 series, 20 series, or 30 series of graphics, card go into Valorant and if you have the option make sure that you put on Nvidia Reflex. It might be the smallest advantage it's all about reducing the input from you clicking your mouse to seeing that impact happen on screen. It is about reducing that latency as much as possible and it's microseconds but I can tell you it 
certainly helps. Nvidia has a great relationship with Riot and they're constantly working on optimizing the game to the best of their abilities across not only strong PCs but laptops like the Salienware one, right? So literally go into the game, make sure that you have it enabled, the Nvidia Reflex option, very easy to find. And if you're looking for an Nvidia GeForce 30 series of graphics card especially, you can check in the description to see what they have on offer at the moment. But enough about all of that, let's get back to what we were talking about. What were we talking about? Some big changes, big news, sort of big, but not really as well at the same time. And just to be sort of clear with it, I'm going to go over everything in like a TLDR fashion, like patch notes almost of what the changes are actually going to be. Then I'm going to provide some insight as to why these changes are coming in. So I do want to hear your feedback. I want to hear your criticisms. Uh, if you hate the changes, I want to know, but at least let me explain myself towards the end of the video uh, before you write your comment, just because it might answer the questions that you might have or provide a bit more insight. So the changes for the hit scan part of stuff is that the name hit scan, the branding is going to be retired over time, slowly but surely just becoming Ryan Central. One of the reasons, well, the main reason for that is that Miska officially left the channel like at the start of the year. Like I mentioned it in a few videos, it's no like big secret. It's just I haven't really done much with hit scan since which is, again, something I want to talk about shortly. Everything's good. I'm actually going to see Miska in a few days to go like on a bit of a holiday, I suppose, which is well-deserved, I think, uh, to go hang out with him and stuff. So it's all good there, but he's officially left to be a game producer at Avalanche Studios. So I will say, if you want to keep up to date with what Miska's doing, which you should, at Miska underscore on Twitter. So you can see everything that he's up to. And when there's a game to announce or whatever he's working on, it'll be announced. I don't even know what he's working on currently, so... So yeah, he'll be letting you know what he's working on in due time, I suppose. For the content, it doesn't really change to an extent. You can sort of still expect all of that long form content when it's appropriate. For example, when there's a patch where there's a lot of changes in that I can talk about it for 10 minutes, that'll be on this channel. When there's a skin line with a lot to talk about or the battle pass where you can talk about multiple things that feels like you're not adding fluff to it, that'll be on this channel. Uh, when a new agent comes out, we'll cover that and myth bust it and all other bits of news that warrants making a longer video. That's the main thing. So for the other videos like for example the skins at the start of this uh, video in particular usually i'd make like a five minute video on that alone but i don't want to do that anymore so what is going to happen with that short-term content whether there's a patch with two major changes in it but you can't talk about it for more than two minutes for example or a skin like, like this one or the previous one definitely uh, that you can cover in a couple of minutes well those videos are going to go onto another channel that is just called ryan central shorties which I, you know, excuse the pun, but it kind of makes sense as to what the content's going to be. It's going to be YouTube shorts, you know, TikTok vertical uh, videos to kind of cover the news, sort of get on that side of stuff. But also, it will just be like one minute, two minute normal videos going over the patches and skins as quickly as possible, removing the BS. So if you just want to see the skins as quickly as possible without me rambling on about what I think or you want to see the patch notes, you're better off subscribing to that channel, to be honest, if you want the news like that. That's going to be the main point of it. The Ryan Central Shorties channel used to be my personal channel where I'd make esports content, for example, because I'm an analyst and caster for VCT. It's what I've spent the majority of this year doing. That esports content is now going to live on this channel because it's long form content. And I will say just outright, if none of this sounds good to you and you're thinking of unsubscribing, you're more than welcome, honestly. It is a big change. It's very different to what maybe you initially subscribed to the channel for. There's people still asking for Overwatch videos, for example. Sorry to say, it isn't happening. As much as I love Overwatch 2, I think 5v5 is great. I, they made Arisa fun and they made Moira fun, for Christ's sake. Like, they've done a really good job. It's not really something I'm interested in pursuing, at least for the time being. So if you're an Overwatch fan expecting that content, you're better off on subscribing. And again, if any of this stuff doesn't sound like your cup of tea, even if you're not sure, I would prefer you unsubscribe and then maybe see these videos in your YouTube feed. If it interests you, you're more than welcome to come back. Like, I hold no ill will, right? Hitscan, Overwatch Central, was always me and Miska. Like, it was just us two. It was two friends that worked together to make a YouTube channel for fun just to get into the closed beta of Overwatch. It sort of blew up. It became a full-time job for five years. We got to both live in Bristol for a bit, and it was fantastic. But with him leaving, that element of what made doing this kind of YouTube content exciting kind of left. 
and it, it's probably some of the loneliest I felt when it comes to doing any form of content really even though I'm surrounded by a lot of great people I made a channel with a friend and now it's just me and that kind of sucks and so the other option other than everything that I just mentioned was to just stop just to go that's it for hitscan thanks for watching guys you can check out my other stuff on the second channel but that kind of felt like a waste because i do want to make content on valorant like i have done at least over the year i'm really freaking proud of the video that i did on neon and fade when they came out myth busting the 100 different interactions and how their ability works that stuff i want to make more of i don't want to make six seven minute videos on skins when you can sum it up in one. Like genuinely, it's, I'm 30 this year. I've been doing this kind of content for seven years. I don't want to do it anymore. Especially with me being able to do so much esports stuff and me wanting to be more analytical and be good at making that content. That's what I want to do. But doing it on Hitscan also has a lot of issues with it that has to do with just what it is. I think a lot of people sort of assume that Hitscan is this this brand, this entity that we're just content creators like we're on Watch Mojo. We're not. I've had close friends come up to me this weekend at Copenhagen and go, oh, so you just get like paid out by the Hitscan guys. I am the Hitscan guy. It's just me. I make the videos, I edit them, I make terrible thumbnails, um, and I try and put it all out and do it all on my own. I sort the brand deals out on my own. It's just me trying to balance all that whilst trying to be involved in esports. It's tough, but I love doing it. But I think people sort of look at the brand Hitscan because it was so brilliantly designed by uh, Creative Grenade, Trav, that did it. And also, like, back in Overwatch Central, it was the same problem. People assumed that we were a business like Pro Guides or Game Leap that's trying to sell you stuff but also making content on the side. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It just, that wasn't us. It's the comparable difference between something like Stylosa and your Overwatch. I think people naturally gravitate to Stylosa because he's a personality. You know what he looks like and you know that it's just him making that content. Whereas your Overwatch, despite it being somewhat similar, feels a bit more like this big organization that's been set up by a big company and it isn't. And that's YouTube branding and brand marketing altogether changing over the last five years. It's interesting, but it's kind of screwed us over in the process. Hitscan was also a name that we wanted when we didn't know what Overwatch 2 was going to be. Whether it was going to be an expansion, a brand new game in the same universe, we didn't know at the time. We just heard the name Calypso, which was the the like hidden name, I suppose, of the project that Overwatch 2 was. We sort of heard it was going to be PvE, so we didn't know if it was going to be a brand new game altogether. Project A came out, we just started to chip away at that whilst Overwatch was in a quiet period. And then, lo and behold, we're very involved in the Valorant scene at this point. The other thing I'll say is... Why make the short videos on another channel? Uh, a lot of people assume, right, that YouTubers, when they make longer videos, like 10 to 12 minutes, that they do it just on the basis of making more ad revenue. They do this because if you make a video longer than eight minutes and you're part of the YouTube partner program, you can add mid-roll ads into your video. You can put like hundreds of them, one after the other. It's something I've never done. Me, I just let YouTube do it automatically because like, I don't want to sort of get involved in that kind of stuff, which is probably at my own expense, right? But what I will say is that it's more to do with increasing watch time. If you make a 12 minute video, people watch it for 75%. That's nine minutes of watch time, which is pretty good. And YouTube looks at that and goes, hey, people are watching this video for quite a long time. Let's put it in front of more people. Let's try and put it on more front pages so people are gonna find this channel and click on this content. But then I put out a two minute video the week after, people could watch all of that but it's still a lot less watch time and it brings the average down on the channel, which is a bit of a conspiracy theory, but I feel like for me, and from what I've experienced on this channel, it makes YouTube go, oh, the watch time's down. Let's not put this channel in front of more people. Let's bring it back a little bit because this is not a, a positive sign. It's not up going upwards. And so that's why all of the short form content's going on another channel, just because it doesn't matter what the watch time is because everything's at least consistent. Here, I can sort of talk a bit more. I could be a bit more analytical. I really liked the video where I spoke about every patch change that came in for the start of episode three, I think it was, you know, when every agent was changed. I really liked that. I sort of spoke about that a bit, but I had a lot of comments saying I was just rambling on so I could get more ad revenue and stuff. And it's not true. I'm an analyst for this game. I want to nerd out about some of the stuff that the devs are doing or talk about some of the design changes or how it's going to impact the game. That's what I kind of do for the other part of my job, right? Makes sense. That I'd want to do it on my YouTube channel, but I worry, especially with Hitscan, that people just want the news quick and dry. And so I don't get the chance to do that. And I just become like a news announcer. These are the patch notes, yada, yada, yada. Thanks for watching. And 
I, I don't want to, I've done that for seven years. I don't want to do it anymore. I, I think the biggest inspiration for me personally is Datto for Destiny 2, always has been. And so I kind of want to be able to do that kind of stuff. When there's news, be able to sort of talk about it a bit more freely instead of worrying that I have to just get the news out to people. I want to make that transition and I think that this is the best opportunity to do that. But like I said, if you just don't care, you want the news, you don't want to listen to anybody talk about a patch for 10 minutes, even if there's a lot of interesting stuff to note down for it, you could check out the other channel, which is just going to be short videos. The eSports stuff is going to be on this channel. I'm going to try and make it more like casual friendly to get you interested. I think that's something that I could do and I'm interested in as somebody that's absorbed a lot of like War Owl content and watches like Launders, Hawker, what they do in CS. Jane is one of my big biggest inspirations from the old Overwatch days. I, I, you know, I feel like I'm looking like him now as well, to be fair. That's the kind of stuff that I want to do. And I'm always umming and ahhing about, oh, can I do it on hit sky? I don't know if I want to. This is me taking that plunge. And I'd love you to take that plunge with me, to be brutally honest, because I am, I'm pooping myself. I miss doing this channel with Miska more than anything, but I feel like it would be a big disservice to both of us if I just stopped making content here altogether. And so, Miska's welcome back anytime that he wants, like ever. But I, I think that he's happy doing what he's doing and he's happy for me to, you know, take the reins of this channel and take it in the direction I want to, which is really nice. But I do miss him, to be fair, I do miss him. This might have been rambly. Uh, I'm also trying not to get like emotional about it a little bit as well, because I feel like it, it's been amazing doing this channel, like doing Overwatch Central, doing Hitscan, but yeah, I, I think that's pretty much everything. Also, you sort of notice in videos as well with me talking, I talk really fast, naturally, because I want to get the video done and in as a quick time as possible. And I, again, it, it stresses me out. It stresses me out making videos. And it's one of the reasons why I've only put out 10 videos in the last three months, four months. It, it's not something that I'm proud of and I want to do better. And I now have that motivation to do so now that I've found the direction I want to take this in. Thanks for Alienware and NVIDIA for sponsoring this video. Again, both of which have been super supportive for all of this too. Uh, the Alienware laptop especially. I'm going to need it over the next few months. I can't really talk about what I'm doing on one of them. But yeah, traveling a lot over the next couple of weeks to do LCQ and all that jazz. So yeah, that laptop is going to come in real handy to make some of this content. And I hope you enjoy some of the stuff that's coming in. This isn't good to be a very quick change. I'm not deleting the name Hitscan instantly. But it's just, again, letting you know where the direction of this channel is going. Just so you can opt in or opt out effectively and so yeah enjoy the run it back bundle all that jazz and until next time take care see you then